Hello everyone, it's Jacob with the Game Block. So, the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC just dropped, and with me being back to my channel, more info on that in the card above, I figured I should probably rank all the tracks in this first wave. There are 8 tracks in total, and I'll be ranking them from worst to best. Also, just so you guys know, the footage in this video is going to be a little bit framey, because my computer isn't exactly the best when it comes to recording. With that out of the way, let's get to the ranking. So, in 8th place, we have Toad Circuit. Now, I loved Toad Circuit on the 3DS. It is one of the best first tracks of a Mario Kart game. But, this version is very, very obviously ported straight from Mario Kart 4 with very minor upgrades. When you look at the model of the course up close, it's actually fairly low poly for Mario Kart 8 standards. Also, the textures, most of them pretty much keep their Mario Kart Tour forms with a few of them looking like they've just been put through a PowerPoint texturizer filter. Now, if they had just done that for every texture in this course, that actually would have made it look very good. But for some reason, most of them are just one single color with no differentiation. For example, the grass, which is the most standout feature of this track simply because of how bad it is, just is one shade of lime green. I would say that the course looked better graphically, even though it was a little lower poly, it looked better graphically back on the 3DS, and that is saying something. I know it's going for a different kind of art style, but that's the art style of Mario Kart 4, and it is not Mario Kart 8. They really should have put more effort into porting this course if they had to take the tour model into making it into the Mario Kart 8 style. Now, while Toad Circuit is certainly my least favorite course from the DLC, I don't actively dislike it, and that's because it does have a few things going for it. First off, even though it isn't entirely anything amazing, the layout of the course is still pretty fun to drive. That's one of the things that made it a pretty good course back on the 3DS. Another thing is, the main texture of the entire course, being the road, actually looks really good when you look at it up close. This doesn't really matter in gameplay very much, but honestly, when you look at it, it really does look really good. It's actually one of the most detailed road textures I've seen in the entire game. I don't understand why it's in this course when everything else is so simplified, but it's there. And finally, probably one of the most important things out of what makes this course actually kinda good in some cases, the music. Just listen to this. I'm gonna stop talking for just a few seconds listen to this music. This, like most of the music tracks from this DLC, is an absolute banger. If there's one thing that I'm impressed with more than anything else with this DLC so far, it's its music. Now, on to 7th place, which is GBA Sky Garden. GBA Sky Garden is definitely a graphical improvement over Toad Circuit. For one, it did look better than the Toad Circuit course in Tor, and it's obvious that this is also the model port from Tor, just like Toad Circuit was, but it definitely has had some changes made to it to make it look better in Mario Kart 8. For one, on the clouds, there's sort of a new flowing, wispy texture all over them, which makes them look kind of like actual clouds. It honestly looks really cool. I wish they did that with Cloud Top Cruise in the base game. Also, the tiling on the course all throughout looks very nice when you're driving on it, and is a very good resolution, has a nice texture to it. It looks basically what the floor of a Mario Kart 8 track should look like. Now, the beanstalks themselves all throughout the course definitely could have some graphical improvements texture-wise, but they still have some detail, which is nice. Overall, the lighting of the track is a little bit too bright, kind of increasing the saturation of the character models, the course model, everything. And something that's interesting is that this is a problem that's in almost all of the DLC courses, or at least all of the ones that are in the daytime. I don't know what this problem would be, I noticed that this looks pretty much a lot like the lighting in Mario Kart Tour, but Mario Kart 8 has a completely separate lighting engine. I wonder if they copied into light objects from Tour as well when they did these courses. Either way, just because it's a little oversaturated doesn't really make or break the course. It does definitely, though, lend to the fact that the new courses look a little more cartoony and less realistic, unlike the base game tracks. One of the reasons that this track is so far down on the list 
is because of one of its main shortcuts, being the leaf cut at the very beginning. So, the leaf cut really looks like a pretty good shortcut, until you actually use it. You see, the leaves are bouncy platforms, and those typically are only reserved for mushrooms. If you see a mushroom, you know it's going to be bouncy. Leaf cuts, like in Cloudtop Cruise, typically are solid ground. For some reason, this is not the case here, and if you're not expecting the bounce from a mushroom, you're probably going to go flying right off to the right side of the course. This is a big problem, especially because the fact that they need to make the platforms bouncy in order to make it a viable shortcut really, really shows the fact that they did not put a whole lot of effort into designing this track shortcuts. I get that this was originally designed for Mario Kart Tour, but I feel like they could have at least made it a little bit better for Mario Kart 8. I mean, the steering assist in Mario Kart Tour prevents the problem of the bouncy platforms throwing you off the side entirely anyway. All in all, it really is a pretty solid course. The only reason it's really this low is because of the shortcut, and honestly, all the other courses I think are better. In 6th place, we have DS Shroom Ridge. Now right off the bat, I want to say I actually really like this course. I really wish it wasn't this far down on the list, but it does have a few problems that warrant it being here, and all of the other courses in the DLC, in my opinion, are just really good. They may not look the best graphically, but they play really well. This is no exception, though it does definitely suffer from some of the worst graphics more than a lot of the other courses. Now before we get into the negatives of the course, let's get into the positives. First off, the music. I know I already went over this with Toad Circuit, and I said that a lot of the DLC had great music, but this is just amazing. It is an insane remix of the original Shroom Ridge from the DS, and the brass is amazing. All the brass instruments, the trumpets, trombones, I don't even know what half of them are, but all I know is it sounds great. Just listen to this for a few seconds. Not only does the course have amazing music, but it's also really fun to drive. The layout is interesting with some good shortcuts, and the cars add some extra challenge. Now I'm gonna have to move on to the negatives. First off, the course suffers the same problem that Toad Circuit does in terms of graphics. Now the colors of this course are much darker than Toad Circuit, and the lighting saturation is a little bit less, which makes it far less noticeable when driving. But other than the road itself, most of the textures on the geometry around you are just one solid color. This is most notable in the large grassy field where they added the glider ramp. There's just a huge area of this one solid color of green, with maybe a few flowers and a few little pieces of grass sticking out every now and then. But it really is a shame that they couldn't have updated the textures for the Mario Kart 8 port, or at least they could have maybe used some of the textures that were already in Mario Kart 8. There's also the problem of the blind turns. Now this course has a lot of blind turns, and typically that's pretty fine for Mario Kart. The only problem is, you're going into oncoming and also going with traffic. So it's very possible to hit one of these cars on a blind turn. Now, I actually haven't had much of a problem with this, but I have seen online that a lot of people have, and I know that this can make this course very unenjoyable to play. Like I said earlier, other than those two things, this is actually a really good course. It really is a shame that Nintendo didn't put enough effort into making the course the best it could be. In fifth place we have Tor Tokyo Blur. Now Tokyo Blur definitely has some problems graphically. The textures are oversimplified just like the other courses because it was ported from Tor, and the course is scaled way too big, but it still is really enjoyable to play, and it has a really interesting gimmick. Every single lap of the track is different, and not in the way of most courses that do this. It's unlike Mario Kart 7's Woohoo Loop or Mario Kart 8's Mount Wario. Instead, you're sort of just going in a different route in the same area. It's not like one continuous line from one place to another. It really feels like you're exploring the city. 
The first two laps are pretty similar with you still being on the ground, but the final lap you go up on a highway entrance ramp and you then fly off the exit ramp on the glider and you're sort of higher up above where the course was for the first two laps. It honestly is really fun. There are a few shortcuts here and there that are pretty satisfying to make. The layout is pretty good and it's just enjoyable to drive. Now let's go back to the part where I said that the course was scaled too big. Now the road itself is actually a pretty decent size, it's just the environment around you that scales way too big. The shy guys and toads in the audience, if you drive up to them, are bigger than you and your cart. Even if you use a heavyweight character, they are still bigger. That is ridiculous, honestly. And if you look at the other parts of the environment, such as the railings surrounding the course, you can see that those are way bigger than they would be in real life. Now I realize that there are courses that have you sort of shrunken down in a normal sized world like Ribbon Road, but this is definitely not one of them. You're supposed to be driving through the city of Tokyo. Now this doesn't really make a huge difference in gameplay at all, and it honestly does kind of help the course a little bit because graphically you don't notice the imperfections because all you can really see is the texture of the actual road the entire race which is quickly looking to be the best texture in all of the courses in this DLC. I don't know why so much care was put into the road texture when it could have been put in the environment, especially because the road is the thing that you really get to see the least because it's going by so fast because you're closer to the road than anything else. It is honestly just a shame they didn't put more effort into the rest of the textures. Overall, the course is fun to drive, has nice music, and just a few flaws that cause it to be this low on the list. We've now reached the top four courses. And in fourth place, we have Paris Promenade. Now, this is the first course that looks like it really could have fit in with the base Mario Kart 8 game. Sure, the model is a little bit lower poly, but really, the lighting and the atmosphere of the entire course itself really does look amazing. The music also really immerses you in that atmosphere, and it really makes you feel like you're just driving around Paris, France. The gimmick of this course is also kind of similar to that of Tokyo Blur. Tokyo Blur's gimmick was, of course, that each lap was different, and that's because it was going through the different variations of the course that are all in Mario Kart Tour. Paris Promenade also does the same thing, but instead, the first two laps are the same, but then in the final lap, it takes you through the backwards variant by sort of putting you through an off-road and having you drive around the entire course backwards. It's a lot of fun, and it really does make the course different, and it's really cool how they did it. Also similar to Tokyo Blur, the course is scaled a little bit too large. And it's honestly actually really hard to tell this unless you compare the size of you and your character with the NPCs cheering you on around the road. Honestly, I really don't mind it in this track because everything other than the NPCs honestly look pretty realistic. And like I mentioned earlier, the NPCs are only scaled a little bit too large. It honestly isn't even all that noticeable when you go up to them. Graphically, the course transitioned beautifully into Mario Kart 8. Plus, it's really fun to drive, and it has some nice music. Now let's be real. Half the people who bought the DLC probably bought it for our third place spot. Coconut Mall. Coconut Mall isn't just one of the best courses in Mario Kart Wii, it is one of the best courses in Mario Kart history. And though it was definitely toned down a bit in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's DLC, it is still definitely an amazing course. Just the music itself is so much like the original, and yet it is still so infused with that Mario Kart 8 feel. Just listen to the saxophone. The course layout itself is still really fun, with all of the escalators being able to be tricked off of on either the railing or the actual escalator themselves. It is a little bit disappointing that it's so much easier to tell which direction the escalator is going. It kind of takes away a little bit of the fun and challenge, but still, it's an amazing track. 
The big jump at the end on the top portion of the track has been changed to a glider ramp, and normally this would lead into the area with the cars going back and forth with the Miis that you would have to try to avoid. Sadly, these have been replaced with stationary cars that have Shy Guys in them, but the course is still fun nonetheless. It really is kind of sad though to see such a key feature of the course be gone in this version. Another odd feature of this version is that all of the metal staircases that take you up sort of to the next floor are now green carpets. Now honestly I do kind of prefer this change, it's just a little bit jarring to see because, I mean, you're way more likely to see a green carpet sort of leading up into the next section of a mall rather than a giant metal staircase with holes in it. However, there is one thing I don't really like about these new staircases, or rather slopes in this case. And that's the fact that if you drift too far out, it doesn't work like it did in the Mario Kart Wii version. In the Mario Kart Wii version, you kind of sort of go up the wall a little bit and then fall back down. But in this version, you kind of just hit the side of the wall at a point of the curve of the wall on the floor, and you just kind of get bounced off. It's really unsatisfying, and it happens all the time if you're using an outside drift vehicle. Graphically, the course actually looks pretty good. Coconut Mall isn't in Mario Kart Tour as of yet, so it couldn't have been ported from that game like the rest of the courses. Now, that doesn't mean that it's at the same caliber as the base game Mario Kart 8 tracks, but it still looks pretty good. Most of the textures have at least some variation in color and design, and there are even some new additions that look pretty cool. For example, in the ramp leading to the area with the open roof, there's a mural of a 2D Mario level on the wall that wasn't there in the Wii version. It was also probably a good idea for the developers to remove the arches at the end of the course with the glider section, because if you put a 200cc mod on Mario Kart Wii, you would run into those arches all the time whenever you were going off the ramp. And since Mario Kart 8 already has 200cc, that would have been a problem. In addition, you would have probably run into them anyway with just 150 or even 100cc since there's a glider ramp. So, it's probably a really good idea that they removed those. Overall, the course keeps most of the charm that it had from the Wii era, and is still absolutely amazing. Though, a few of the changes made by the developers definitely did hold this course back from being in the top spot. In second place, we have another classic, N64 Choco Mountain. Even though the model was probably ported from Mario Kart Tour, this track looks absolutely gorgeous in-game. Just the cave alone looks so phenomenal, with the glowing crystals all around you. And if you look at any of the textures up close, they all look stunning. This looks like what Choco Mountain should have looked like if it was in Mario Kart 8's base game. I know it's a little bit lower poly than most people would have liked, but that actually helps the course's look and feel, because it's supposed to be made of chocolate, a sort of chunky substance. And the only parts that look like they're lower poly are the parts that look like they're made of chocolate. The parts that look like it's actual rock in a mountain look actually pretty high poly. I don't know what they did differently with this course versus the other courses, but it looks so much better. The boulders tumbling down and splashing into the water is one of the best things that I have seen in this game graphically. Now, I know the cores is scaled a little bit smaller than the original N64 version, but I actually quite like that. The road is a decent size, and the loop where you go around the lake doesn't feel long and strenuous anymore. The music is an absolutely incredible remix of the original song. And other than the fact that the course is scaled a little bit smaller, which, as I said, I think actually is a good thing, I can't really find any flaws in this course. This would be in first place if it weren't for what is in first place, which, in my opinion, does pretty much everything this course does, but it's just even more fun to play and even more challenging. In our first place spot, we have Mario Kart Tours Ninja Hideaway. Ninja Hideaway is just as graphically good looking, if not even better, than Choco Mountain. The lighting is perfect here, unlike most of the other tracks in the DLC. The model has clearly been spruced up from the Mario Kart Tour version. Just look at the trees alone and you'll see that there's a big difference. There are tons of different paths and shortcuts that you're able to take, some of which are pretty hard, but super rewarding if you're able to pull them off. 
there are a lot of sharp turns in this course that are really satisfying to be able to master once you get past their difficulty. And the layout of the course in its whole is just really fun to drive. The glider section where you have to avoid the shy guys on the floating signs, make sure you get an item box, choose whether you want to risk the high route or go the low route. It's just so much fun. And a final portion where you're just tricking off all of the roof ledges and you have to make sure you get an item box. You have to make sure you float up to the higher track to see if you can get more air so then you're able to get past your competition. It is just an insanely enjoyable track. The only thing that I really don't like in this course is the fact that it's populated by shy guys and not ninjis, which is honestly a minuscule detail. Ninjis are an enemy in the Mario series that are basically little ninjas that will sometimes throw little ninja stars or something at you. And it really would have been cool to have them sort of all throughout the ninja hideaway instead of the shy guys, but the shy guys definitely do still work and they do their job. It was probably just a matter of they already had the model for the shy guy in the game, so they decided to use that. So that's my ranking for the first wave of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC. If you liked the video, please press the like button and subscribe, as well as make sure to follow me on my Twitter and my Twitch for more gaming news and some streams. With that out of the way, thank you all for watching, I'm Jacob with the Game Blog, signing off.